I don't know if you've heard of this small time YouTuber, Casey Neistat, but he recently made this video called The Greatest Night of My Career. The gist of it was they honored over 100 creators in this amazing showcase in New York City. And here's a big fat surprise. I wasn't invited. It's cool, I get it. You knew I was busy. I was probably like rolling around in a pile of money, hanging out with Chris Pratt, talking about how much we love our muscles. You know, regular person stuff. But Casey's video got me thinking, what's the greatest night of my career? Now I know you're waiting for me to name drop, tell you about some big fat pile of money in Malibu, some hot tub and a private helicopter. Uh, this story actually happened in Canada while I was street performing. It involves the police, an ambulance, and the biggest star there was this lady that sold paintings of her kids. You know what? I really want to like that lady, but I can't and I never will. Let me explain. Right before I do is a thank you to all my subscribers lately. They got the notifications turned on. We're gonna be giving away a $25 gift card to Amazon and we're gonna be picking somebody from the comments to win. So thanks for clicking like and stuff. All right, back to the story. Day four at the festival and that lady comes up. She's got this big smile on her face. She was really cute. And I know who she was because her cat paintings, they were adorable. So she comes up and she says, You're kind of terrible, so why don't you just leave? What? What? Yeah, it totally caught me off guard. It was a little insulting. So I said something like, Yeah, no offense, but I only take advice from folks that paint dogs. Well, 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 fine, whatever. And she stormed off. So I go on with my day and I got my big show coming up. And it's important to remember that on this trip, I'm working entirely for tips. I do like a 30 minute juggling comedy show. And at the end, people tip you. It's like being a waiter, but if at the end, half the people ran away without paying. And side note here, if you're ever watching a street performer and wondering what a good tip is, I've always thought $10 if you watch the whole show, five if you watch half, and if you really want to impress them, just give them your car. You know, no biggie. You don't even have to fill it up with gas, you know, just the actual vehicle. Now the reason this show I'm about to do is so important, and if you've seen the other I Called the Cops videos, you might remember this. I had no money. We spent the last of our cash flying up to Canada, and so far on the trip, we were just breaking even. It was so bad that my show partner and I decided to do separate shows just as a way to make more money. And my first show by myself was a big one. Seven o'clock on a Saturday night. And if this went right, I could pay for the whole trip in one show. But guess who wanted to ruin it? Are you really doing another show? Oh yeah, there's like a schedule and it's my turn. <sighs> you are gonna regret this. Now, I don't know what was up that lady's butt, but if anyone has a pair of pliers, she could definitely use your help. So I'm doing my show and I'm excited because it's actually working. I never really performed by myself before. And it gets to my final trick where I free balance on this 10 foot tall ladder. Uh, why did I learn this trick? The crowd loved it. But since it was a new trick for me, I was kind of stuck and literally needed help to get down. But then this happened. Hey, clear the street. It's not safe. Run. Uh, don't do that. I, I'm stuck. Everyone laughed and I was like, no, I'm actually stuck. No one. Get out of here! And I say very calmly, like, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure everything's fine. Just step to the side. Because the last thing I want is 500 people running and screaming while I'm stuck 10 feet in the air. And there's a big part of me that's thinking, this lady's making it up so she can ruin my show. But then someone else yells, no, someone actually passed out. An ambulance is coming. <gasps> oh, that's just great. She willed God to ruin my show. P.S. This all happened at the Edmonton Fringe in Canada. So if you want to see me live, definitely get tickets to that or one of my other shows. So now I'm concerned and I'm like, I gotta help this person. So I do the only thing I can think to do. I'm still stuck, you guys. Will someone please help me down? A couple of dudes grab my ladder, help me off. We cleared the street for the ambulance. But the whole time that lady's still yelling. Get out of here. Go away. Don't Tip the street performer. I was like, is this lady taking advantage of a person that's passed out to ruin my show? Ma'am, if you could calm down, I think you're scaring people. Good. As long as they leave your show, people can finally see my booth. And now it all made sense. She didn't like my show because it blocked off her booth and she didn't sell stuff. And she desperately needed money to buy herself a big old pair of pliers. So how does this terrible story end up as the best night of my career? Well, the whole time that lady was yelling and screaming, people keep coming up to me and giving me money. Great tips, like 20s, a couple 50s. It was one of the biggest shows I'd ever done. But I wasn't sure if I should feel bad about it because of the whole ambulance thing. But then a few days later, I get this tweet. My brother and I were at your show. He was the guy that passed out. So sorry we interrupted. And we wanted you to know you were amazing. I don't know if it's okay to feel this way, but that tweet is a shining moment in my career. And I find it weird that she didn't tell me if her brother made it out okay. I had to ask her, turns out he's fine. So if you're ever at a show or maybe watching one of my videos, and you have to suddenly go to the hospital, please don't feel the need to apologize. As long as you click the like button, we are totally good. <laughs> Stupid. 
Also, if you're wondering who voiced the cat lady, it was Azzyland. I love her channel. It's a gaming channel, and she's a cute lady, so there's no reason not to go. Go leave a comment over there and tell her she's perfect. Get it? Cat joke? Azzy, I'd love to be in a video on your channel. Just let me know. And if you'd like to design some of the characters on this channel, head over to my Instagram, where we're always having contests. And well, that's it for this week's story. If you want to know what happened in some of the other I Called the Cops videos, you might want to start with day one. So we had just started street performing, and there was this guy, Jason Escape, who was like, Psst, bro, there is a festival in Canada. You just go up there, you can street perform. I'm like, really? Just go up there? Shh! Don't tell nobody. So on a whim, we spent like a thousand dollars on plane tickets, and oh yeah, when we were like, should we make like a reservation at a hotel? No. When you get there, take a bus to this address be a place to stay on the corner. So obviously right away we're like, oh, okay. And we fly up there our first time out of the country. Side note, I, this guy totally could have been lying. Like I don't remember even checking. So we get to the hotel, it's real. Okay, we go inside and there's this decrepit looking Steve Buscemi petting a cat, kind of like Dr. Evil style. You boys want a room. Yes, please. We get into the room, <laughs> lots of red flags. There's no lock on the door. Okay, there's a giant stain in the middle of the carpet. Like, I, uh, maybe blood. There was Slurpee cups under the bed. Oh, and there was a mini fridge in there with some old dentures in it. And we're like, this is, this is very strange. So we go to bed, you know, anything to just close our eyes and not be there, right? And about three o'clock in the morning, we hear these girls yelling. Go away, leave us alone. The two of us get up, go to look out the window. Right, and there's this really buff looking Channing Tatum mofo. I'm not making this up. I literally saw an Asian man fly <laughs> through the darkness and kick him in the face. Five other dudes came out, started wailing on him, punching him, and then 10 seconds later, like ninjas, he vanished. Right away, we're like, we gotta help this guy. So we head downstairs, and there's these three beautiful looking girls coming up the stairs, followed by some other dodgy looking dudes. All right, and decrepit Steve Buscemi's limping up the stairs behind him like, Hey, you can't go up there. You know, he lightly kind of grabs one of the dudes by the wrist to stop him from following the girls to their room. And dodgy dude is pissed. He wails around, throws him up against the wall and starts strangling him like hardcore. And right away we're like, whoa, Canada is a giant fight club. We did not know. I would have brought my nunchucks. So this is happening like a foot from my face. And I'm just like, get this instinct to be like, I have to do something. And he's still like, no. You ruined my game! Anything you wanted my stuff! And then he, they had like a friend there that was standing right next to him, like polishing his muscles and stuff, right? So I decide, being a rough and tough street performer, just start tapping him on the shoulder. Be like, Excuse me, sir, please stop. Please? Luckily, the police show up for the outside thing. I'm like, oh, Most Canadians are nice. So I run outside and we're like, Police! Police, help us! We got a problem here! Oh, hey. No problem here. We already took care of it with some handshakes and hugs. Aw, that's so nice. I'm like, no, dude, there is another fight inside. Point of story, decrepit Steve Buscemi lives. All the jerks received their five to ten hugs and were arrested. And we changed hotels. And that was just night one. The story gets even crazier. You may have seen this video too. If not, here's day two. So you might remember a little video I did about that street fight in Canada. And in the comments, everyone's like, no, Canadians are nicer than that. It's true. You got that reputation that's like, them Canadians are real nice folk. In fact, flying up to Canada, we actually talked about this. Can we get off the plane? <laughs> Let's just ask someone for a ride to the hotel. <laughs> we think we're all funny, like, oh, someone's gonna say yes, because Canadians are nice. So we get off the plane, and literally, in the middle of the lobby, like, excuse me. Does anyone want to take us to the corner of 82nd and White Avenue? Anybody? And then some guy walks up and he's like, Hey, I'll do it. Uh, okay, sure, yeah. Great, I'll be right back. And at first we're like, oh yeah, he's coming back. He's Canadian. And after like 10 minutes, we're like, oh no, he's not coming back. He just said he was. Very funny, sir. But then he comes back. Hey, that took longer than I thought. I gotta run. Here's my number. If you need anything, let me know. And we're just staring at each other like, whoa. Oh, and to fully get this story, you gotta know that we used folding chairs in our street show. We would stack them all up, balance at the top, and juggle. <laughs> Before we left, we're like, hey, let's just buy chairs when we're there. It'll be easier. So when we got there, we were taking the bus everywhere. Half an hour to one store, 45 minutes to another. And we're getting worried because without these chairs, we can't street perform. So we can't make money, which basically screws us and leaves us stuck in Canada. So we get back to our hotel and I'm like, <gasps> Let's call the number. Hello? Hey, you you said if we needed anything, we should call this number. I don't know where he lived or what he was doing, but he showed up within like seven minutes. <laughs> hey, hey 
guys. How's it going? I'm, I'm over here. I'm over here, guys. I think most people be creeped out, but we're like, Canadians are nice. And we hopped into this stranger's car and started cruising around. You know, that hotel is pretty shady. You can stay with me if you want. Then we found out the guy left work so he could drive us around. And we're in the back seat like, we found the nicest man in the whole world. Now this story's about to get interesting, all right? But first I gotta tell you, I went to VidCon. I hang out with Jade Nods, went out, Tony V. Toons, Dominic, Cypher, Dad, it was so much fun. Yes, 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 yes. I got to meet you guys. I'm gonna post a vlog next week and more footage on my second channel. And I can't wait to see it, for you to see it. I already saw it. All right, now, back to the story. So we're still in this guy's car, having a great old time. He drove us around for hours, we couldn't find the chairs, and he felt bad so he bought us ice cream. Then he drops us off at the hotel. Are you sure you don't want to stay with me tonight? And there was something about the way he said it that time that made us realize, oh, this guy's actually creepy. We jump out of the car quick and just lock ourselves in our room, just kind of waiting for him to pop up and creepily say, does someone want a hug? So it's the next morning. <laughs> this guy's really creeping me out. Hello. I'll bring him over now. I guess he had spent the whole rest of the day looking for the chairs. And he got them. And he bought them. And he was bringing them to us right now. And we're like, it's 6.59 in the morning. Is this guy creepy or nice? He pulls up a minute later, like he'd been waiting around the corner. But he's got the exact chairs that we need. Hallelujah, you did it. This is great. We're pulling the chairs out of the back of his car. My buddy's like, we can give you money for the chairs. Nah, you keep it. If you need anything else, give me a call. You can always stay at my place. And then he winked. You're very nice, sir, but you're sending very mixed messages. As he's driving off, one of the other street performers comes up and he's like, hey, you know Tony. And we're like, what? Yeah, he used to come into this coffee shop I worked at in the gay district. He would hit on everybody. Oh. It all makes sense. See, we're pretty certain he was flirting with us, and we had no idea. If we learned anything, it's the gay Canadians are double nice.